right now we're in front of the Peterson Nature Area. The Nature Area was built by Mr. Osborne in the 1960s and it's been an integral part of Peterson ever since. It has seven biomes. The Redwood Forest, the Chaparral, the Marsh, the Deep Pond, the Riparian, and the Bogs. So we'll visit each one as we go through the Nature Area. We are now in the Peterson Nature Area's Redwood Forest. As you can see, this place is surrounded in huge trees. These redwoods can grow up to 200 feet tall. Squirrels, worms, and other animals and plants also live here and make use of the shade that the redwood trees provide. Because it's so shady and dark in here, the redwood forests tend to be quite cool. So this is the Peterson's Marsh. The marsh has a lot of water and reeds like to grow in this water so you'll you see a lot of reeds in this place. Mosquito fish are placed here so that they eat mosquitoes that lay their eggs in here so the Peterson Nature Area does not have a problem with mosquitoes. Also crayfish like to eat here and they eat the mosquito fish and they also eat a lot of other insects and fish that live in the marsh. So this is the Peterson Nature Area's Chaparral. As you can see, it's a lot drier and there's a lot more sun in this place than the Redwood Forest. So dry plants like milkweed and these other bush, dry, dry bush love to live here. Um, this place is a great calm place if you want to come and just relax and it's a great place to learn about wildlife and nature. This is the Peterson Nature Area's deep pond. There are a lot of fish, turtles, crayfish, bass, and hundreds of other organisms that love to live here. Ferns, reeds, and other plants also proliferate around the edges of the deep pond. Turtles rest on these logs when it's sunny, and they love to bask in the sun. And this place is a great place to come out and hang out we are now in the riparian. You can hear the hallmark of a riparian natural habitat, running water. Inside the water, there are crayfish, clams, and water skimmers, to name a few. There are also a large number of plants on the surface. In fact, this place is so thick with vegetation that you can't even see the water. Horsetails, like these, during the age of the dinosaurs, used to be over 10 feet tall. Ever since you've been a nature area guide, how have you felt about the facility? I, I think the nature area is a great place. It's a great place for, for us to come and relax. It's also a great place for kids to learn about nature, especially elementary school kids. And um, I think the field trips are a great idea. They, um, they really get people, and, and especially elementary school kids, interested in nature. And I, I think it's a great facility, and it's also really nearby to a lot of schools. So. So, what have you learned from seeing the nature area? I've learned a lot about the biomes and the different environments in the world, and yeah. Okay. How is your overall experience as a nature area guide? It's a great experience. You get to um, learn to talk to little kids and be a leader and learn about nature. Okay. Okay, hello, Emily. Hi. What is your overall experience as a nature area guide? So it's been a really great experience for me since I joined last year. Um, I've learned a lot more about the animals and there's, di there's lots of different kinds of plants too that you can learn about that's really interesting. And I think that at elementary schoolers that come here can really benefit from that. And not just elementary schoolers too, but anybody else like such as um, the public, I guess. This is a female western bluebird at the nature area. It's right now on top of its nest box and it's actually about to go in. So right now it has a worm in its mouth. It's going to feed it to its chicks and there it goes. These are tadpoles inside the Peterson nature area's bogs. As you can see, they haven't got legs yet, but they can still swim very well. This is a catheted nymph.
as you can see, it's a great jumper. And this will eventually become a fully fledged catydid. So as you can see, it's got those long antennae and legs meant for jumping. This is a red-eared slider at the Peterson Nature Area's deep pond. You can see those red lines that give this turtle its name. It's a very common turtle to find at the deep pond. You'll often find it swimming or sun basking on logs. This is a crayfish at the riparian area of the Peterson Nature Area. As you can see, it looks like a lobster yeah, and it's exactly. red. Crayfish. And you can see the fast moving streams that make up the riparian as well. So if you look really, really and the crayfish closely, thrives in the riparian area. And it looks like a lobster. You can see those pincers as well as the feelers and it has eight legs as well. In addition to that, if you do fall off or if you need any help, or if you want to identify a plant or an animal, feel free to stop us at any time. So our first stop today will be Peak Plans. Well, that's right over there, so So what motivated you to start the nature area, to build the nature area? Long time ago, uh, when we had classes, the kids would be basically stuck in the classroom and they weren't learning anything. So what we wanted to do is after we covered a particular project or an idea, we wanted to give them an application. And that's something that was for real. And so we decided to have basically a huge lab outside. And so that's kind of how we started it. So, so how hard was it to s sort of build the nature area? It wasn't hard at all. But the big issue was, who's going to do the work? And so, because this was a high school, and, I, and there's nothing against middle school kids, but high schoolers are bigger, and they can use wheelbarrows, and they can use shovels. And so when you go out there, you'll find that most of the, most of the, work out there is heavy duty stuff. And so that means with you know wheelbarrows with 150, 100 pound loads of, of soil had to be moved. We had to be able to use picks and shovels. And the average middle school kid today just don't have, just they don't have that ability. <laughs> they're, they're lucky if they know what end of a shovel to use. <laughs> so how, how long was it under construction? Like, is it like, how, how long did it take you to finish at least? Well, we, we started in 1969. That's when we used the first shovels and, and, and started doing the first digging. That was when and, my mom was born. But, it, but the process has been, been ongoing. But you, you get, most of the heavy, heavy work was done uh, when this was a high school. 
However, it was interesting when we were a middle when we converted from a high school to a junior high, we rebuilt the marsh. Oh. So, but we did that with with uh, with uh, middle uh, with uh, junior high kids. You have to realize that included ninth graders. Ninth graders are starting to fill out. And they've got some muscle, and so we managed to get it done. So. Do you um, so? Do you plan to add any more biomes, or do you plan to add anything else to the no. nature? No. Again, it always comes down to manpower. It's just like trying to get people just to water. Guess what? <laughs> There's a lot of work, and there aren't an awful lot of people that that volunteers. Hey, I'll water this for the next year, huh? And so, it, it's called commitment. In fact, we have a special word for it. It's called stewardship. In other words, are you willing to step up? and take care of something for a year period of time. And so there's lots of work, but the number of workers who step forward to accomplish the task is few. So what do you think um, uh, field trips will teach kids? What, what is the main thing they should get out of a field trip? Well, it depends upon the, it depends upon the, the age group. I mean, for, for some, I'm just seeing a lizard. I mean, that, that blows my mind that a kid who is in third grade has never seen a lizard before. What does that tell you? Tells me they don't interact with nature much at That's all. That's right, exactly. And so for some of them, this is the first time that they've actually had a chance to see a, a turtle in the wild. And I've been to zoos before, and the, you look inside the glass, and you know, oh, look at the turtle. But this is the first time they see something out in the wild. And while they're looking at the turtle, a uh, duck or curlew will, will walk in front of them. And uh, yeah, so this is the first time for some of them actually had a chance to see these things. And, you know, we have birds that nest in the nature area. We have uh, 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 fish that are building reds right in front of their eyes. So it, it depends upon the age group. As obviously, as, as they work their way up, we expect them to be able to do a little more academic. So what's your favorite biome? Probably. Oh, yeah. Do the same here. So, is it is it because of the organisms that live there? No, it's because of the variety. You have to realize that not only do you have the community, but actually the area of the community that's most important is the edge, where two communities join. We have a special name for that. It's called they're called ecotones, and so you have the terrestrial organisms right. here, and then you have the aquatic organisms here, but where you have the two touching, you actually have a greater variety of organisms in a given area. So, is, is the, um, how much volunteer help is usually given to the nature area? Good question, and on the maintenance side, it's almost None. zero, because again, you have to be able to make a commitment. You have to say, yeah, I'll be here. Because if a kid says, I'm going to water that tree for the next year, and he doesn't show up, what happens to the tree? It dies. It dies. And so, again, it's called commitment, or, and it's, or it's called stewardship. And so, as far as volunteer help, uh, we don't get an awful lot. But now, on the other hand, for example, if you consider the number of kids who help out with the field trips, well, then that's a lot of help. You know, and you can break the, the classes that come, you can break them down into smaller groups. And, and as long as the, the kids that are coming from the schools behave, sometimes you can see a little bit more that way. It, it's hard to have a 30 or, or 35 kids following in, in one spot. You can't put them anywhere. But when you use the volunteer nature guides, that can break the visiting groups down to maybe four or five or six, and then it's easier to take them around. So that's a big help. So what's the rarest or, or your favorite organism that you've seen in the nature area? Good question. And if you go to, and if you go to the school webpage, you'll notice that we had a bald eagle. I, oh. just, just by chance, I was working here, and the, and, and the crows were just going ballistic. They were going, making all kinds of sound. And just by chance, I had my camera here, and there a bald eagle landed just outside the nature area and gotten a squirrel. Mm -hmm. And I took photographs of it as it was tearing the squirrel apart. 
So that's probably the most unusual visitor. But we did have a sandhill crane that visited at one time. Oh, wow. So, again, and they're, they're a little more common than bald eagles, but to have them visit the nature area was kind of unusual. So, in conclusion, what do you think the future of the nature area will, will bring? And what, what, do you, what is one thing you would want to um, tell future nature area guides? What, what's one advice that you would give them? Good question. And the answer is, is that when I am gone, pushing daisies someplace, that who's going to take care of the nature area after Mrs. and Mrs. Fawner and I go? Who's going to take over the job? And to be honest with you, that's 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 one of the biggest questions I have: is who's going to step up and take care of the stewardship? So this is the Peterson Marsh. As you can see, there are a lot of animals here, and animals love to live in the Peterson Marsh because there are plenty, there's a lot of food for them to eat. Shishank, check this out, what is that? What is that, Shishank? <laughs> hey! He's talking about animals. So, yeah, I think we found one. Hey, hey you! Hey you! What is that? Go! This is the Peterson Nature Area's deep park. As you can see, there are hundreds of plants, animals, and or... or what are you doing? Yeah. Okay, like what is that? <laughs> what is that? Where is it? <laughs> what is that? Peterson Nature Area's riparian. As you can see and hear, there are fast-moving streams that are um, that are causing the. <laughs> so this is the Peterson Nature Area's redwood forest. Wait, stop.